In this video, I'll talk about the metrics available to track the progress of the people in your group. To monitor the progress of the people in your group, click on the Group Stats button in the menu bar. This provides a list of the students in your group along with the data for that student. I'll talk about the data itself a little later, but first I'll show several different ways of sorting the data. You can use this toggle to choose to view individual student data or composite data across all students. In the Grouped by Unit option, the average data for all students can be displayed at the unit level or the lesson level. In the Grouped by Student option, the data is displayed for individual students. The student data can be sorted alphabetically by student last name, email address, by the total number of points completed, or the total number of points attempted. The default view in all of these cases is at an overall course level. Click here to expand to show progress at a unit level or a lesson level. Now let's talk about the displayed metrics, how they're calculated, and what they're meant to indicate. These set of stacked bars are intended to show the student's level of engagement with the course materials. The top two bars indicate the passive activities. The bottom three sets of bars indicate engagement with the active materials, the practice problems. The practice problem difficulty levels are indicated by one, two, or three stars, with three star problems being the most difficult. The top bar in each case indicates the number of points attempted, while the bottom bar indicates the points the student has completed. By comparing these bars, you can see to what extent the student is actually contributing to their learning. Students who are looking at a lot of materials without inputting their own solutions will have a lot of attempted points, but very few completed points. This data can show if a student is primarily engaging in passive activities, simple problems, or difficult problems. The data on the top right indicates progress on quizzes. The data on the lower right indicates which specific passive materials the student is accessing. You can tell from this how many times they've watched the lecture videos, looked at examples, or read the text. Now let's look at the point calculations in a little more detail. The number of points attempted is simply the total number of points the student would receive if they correctly solved all the problems that they accessed. One point is received every time a passive activity is accessed. Points attempted also include the total cumulative points for all practice problems for which the student clicks the Submit button. A problem is not indicated as attempted simply because the student looks at the problem. The points completed are calculated as follows. Students get credit for only one visit to each passive link. So if a student views a lecture video 10 times, they only receive one point. For practice problems, the points completed include all points associated with every correct answer the student submits. There are, however, some deductions for assistance the student receives, which I'll talk about in the next slide. The progress bar lengths are normalized by the total number of points available. Now let's talk about the penalties associated with getting assistance. Clicking on a hint button when it appears will deduct 25% from that problem. Clicking on give up results in no completed points for the problem. There's no penalty for accessing related materials in the assistance tab. The Help option allows students to work through a problem step by step. Each help step is allocated a number of points. If the help step question is answered correctly, the student is awarded those points. Giving up on a help step results in no credit for that step. It is possible for a student to receive full points for a problem if they answer each help step correctly. Finally, let's take a quick look at the quiz and detailed passive materials metrics. The quiz scores are straightforward. They consist of the quiz points awarded and the total number of quiz points in that unit or lesson. This is also expressed as a percentage. These icons show the total number of times a student has accessed that category of passive materials. Passive materials consist of reference materials, lecture videos, and examples. Let's use this student as an example of how we might interpret these metrics. 
I'll take a look inside Unit 2 and look at the first few lessons there. In Lesson 2.1, the student is only performing passive activities. He simply rewatched the lecture video 10 times. You can see the raw data associated with the progress bars by hovering the mouse over the appropriate bar. He's attempted 10 points out of a total of 5 passive points available. This exclamation mark indicates that more than 100% of the points available have been attempted. For the points completed, he only gets credit for one viewing of the video. My suggestion to this student would be to stop watching the videos and actually do some problems. In Lesson 2.3, however, this student is doing exactly what I want. And in fact, I would probably infer that this student has some background with voltage dividers since he hasn't even watched a video or looked at the text. He's jumped directly to doing a difficult problem correctly, unlocked the quiz, and gotten full credit on the quiz. He's not wasting time, and now he can move on to other topics. The metrics we provide, with the possible exception of the quiz scores, are not intended to give the student a grade. They are intended to show where a student might need help.